welcome to another episode of Sierra with Drizzle with Friends. Today I have my mom, Jackie, with me. Today is salsa time. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be starting off with a margarita. Mm -hmm. We're making a skinny margarita today mm -hmm. because my mom and I don't like very sweet drinks at all. Um, we're actually vodka girls, but... But I can do a nice tequila. Yeah, well, we're also Mexican. Um, and then we're going to make my mom's famous guacamole and we're gonna make salsa that my aunt taught me how to make too. So we're gonna show you guys some appetizers to be able to make for the summertime, for parties and things like that. Right, mom? Tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you do? Well, really, who's your favorite child? Where's the coin? <laughs> <laughs> it's me, it's fine. She about is hair. an incredible, award-winning hairstylist. She has been on Project Runway. She has done huge runway shows. She's won awards over in London. She's been in the Washingtonian Magazine. How many times? So many times as best colorist, right, in DC. More times than we can count. She's incredible. And she's the reason why my sisters and I are so creative and crafty, too. Okay, so first we're gonna start with um, cutting our limes. You wanna cut them in half, mom, or you wanna squeeze them? Oh, I can do both. Okay. And make sure that the limes are a little soft. If they're really hard, mm -hmm. they're not gonna get enough and juice. And a good way, too, to find out is if the um, skin is smoother, then they're more ripe, they're mm -hmm. plumper. And a cheater way to do it too, if you have to, is throw them in the microwave for just a couple of mm -hmm. seconds. You'll get, you'll make them juicier. Even if it's a dry one, mm -hmm. it'll make them juicier. Yeah. So my mom was, you know, we're Mexican, mm -hmm. um, and my mom always made sure that we were very enriched in both cultures. And now we have such appreciation for everyone's culture, and I, it's such a blessing that she did that for us. But yeah, it was so much fun. My mom. We didn't have a lot of money, but we didn't realize we didn't have a lot of money until she told us when we were older that we were broke. <laughs> I think that the more you find out about people in different cultures, the more you figure out the people are the same. Mm -hmm. And what matters is family and love and having an identity. Mm -hmm. So, and tolerance. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not willing to go outside of who you are, then you're not going to be very yeah. tolerant. Every day we had to learn something new about Mexico or anything, anything. It's like she's like the, the dad from my big fat Greek wedding. Anything great, she would find a way to tell you how it came from Mexico. Doesn't matter what it is. Chocolate and gum. And silver. Didn't you say silver? Well, silver is the, the great silversmiths are from Mexico. Yes. Everybody knows that. That's like common knowledge. I didn't know that till, I mean, you're the only person who's ever told me that, so. Look it up. So now we're gonna make, even though it's skinny, we're gonna make it Cadillac. So how you do this is very easy. You can get one of the lines that we've already squeezed and you're gonna go around the, um, what is this called? The ribbon. And you can buy this already, the margarita salt. Okay, so to this, I'm gonna add two shots of White tequila, 1800. Tequila blanco. Tequila blanco. Mm -hmm. I got 1800. Getting pretty full. Cool. Then we're going to add, this will be Grand Marnier or we have Contro. So we're gonna add one shot of this. I'm just eyeballing this, so you know. And then some agave for sweetness. How much? A half? Yeah. Because the Contro is gonna give it a little And the lime is good. Battling against the line. You want to taste a little bit first before we mm -hmm. pour it in there. Mm, it's good. Salute. Salute. Oh, that is really good. It's really good. Mm -hmm. It's the lime and the good tequila. This mm -hmm. is better. I know it's easy to buy margarita mix, but you really don't have to. Mm -mm. It's, I feel like it's fresher this way. Away. Totally pressure. Okay, we are gonna get started on our guacamole. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get some lime in our bowl because this is gonna start to marinate and that is literally one of the secrets of making good guac. So I'll you put the lime this, in here. You wanna do the squeezing? You know how to say avocado in Spanish? Avocado? Mm -hmm. Spanish was my first language concert, it's popular but, belief. Uh, then we moved to the East Coast. And I, I got a Spanish nanny. 
that I said, do not practice English. We had to pay for childcare. Yeah, it's but- It's not a nanny like you go to a service. Exactly. I to... went through Catholic social services and started interviewing women who were coming, who coming over and needed jobs, mm -hmm. or who, came, who were here and needed jobs. And then I, I hired an amazing nanny who was who like ended more up like becoming like our grandma. Yeah. And it was it was affordable because you were able to the house that we're in, you were able to offer her a room to stay. Room, in. board, food, mm -hmm. and then I paid her I mean, for us it was a lot, but it was very little. Yeah. So my name is technic technically Catricia. It is Catricia. Dad spelled it wrong on the birth certificate. And we didn't find out until I was almost 18 and we were going to go get my driver's license. I mean my yeah, I had to get my driver's license, so we went. Why did we go to California? Why were we in California? That it was like, you couldn't find my birth certificate. Mm -hmm. So you were like, we're going to Santa Barbara. At this point, there wasn't the services to be able to like order online or anything. Like mm -hmm. you had to go to the place. So we went. Went to the courthouse. We went Santa to the Barbara. courthouse, and it was me, my mom, and my dad, because I was trying to get my license. And my mom was like, I'm picking up a birth certificate for my daughter, Catricia Davis. And they were like, what's the date? What's the birthday? And they're like, we can't find it. She's like, she was bored. Like, you know, I just- a Cottage Hospital. A Cottage Hospital. She was like, we, she has it. And they were like, no. And then they said, we have a Catrice Davis. And, and then I, I will never forget, my mom looked at my dad like- He had one job, only one job. I carried the child, I pushed the child out. I got a scar from end to end. And all he had to do was fill out the birth certificate. In California, everybody would pronounce my name correctly because we were real Mexicans all the time. Over here, uh, no, people were calling me Katricia, and I hated that with my whole soul. But my dad always called me Catrice, and all of my cousins on like on my dad's side, everybody called me Catrice. Everybody, that was my nickname, and I loved my nickname. Um, and so when we went and it was like, you know, my mom now is like cursing my dad out. And meanwhile, I am like, ah, finally I have a name that people will pronounce correctly and it will be fine. So I'm not a big measurer. And in fact, one of my girlfriends really got mad at me one time because she wanted one of my recipes and I just told her the ingredients and the sequence of what to do. And she thought I was trying to not give her the recipe, but that's just how I cook. So, oh, pink, okay. You season it to your liking, you know? Some people so like salt it. salt and pepper are very important. We like very limey things. And I love pepper. Yes, my mom loves pepper. And then you wanna, you wanna mix syrup really well. And then you're gonna put the onions in. You're gonna put and the you, onions directly into yep, the lime. Yep, into this. It'll start to make the onions a little bit drunk. And it helps it take away from like a sharp onion yeah. taste. You don't get yeah. like a it, sharp yeah. onion. Yep. Yeah. I am going to cut up the avocados and let's see, take the little thingy. So when you're getting your um, avocados, you want to make sure that they're a little bit soft so that you can push them in a little bit. If they're really hard, they're not for block. And if you can, so I don't know if you see that. And if you push them in and it goes in too easily, they're, they're, yeah, they're gonna they, be brown and yeah. gross inside. Yeah, so, you know, Mexicans like a lot of different countries, they don't like to waste food. And so this came up with, you know, not wasting food. I'm just gonna, if it's soft enough, and then you get the seed out. You wanna save the seed. Okay. The reason you save the seed is because after you make the guac, you put a couple of seeds back in it and that keeps the guac from turning brown. Now my guac never turns brown even if I didn't have the seed because it's so good that people eat it up before it gets to the Oh, that was good. And because she also puts a lot of lime in it. So, and we're using five avocados here. This is a nice seed. It's nice and, and big. And you, you use like a medium sized red onion, right? Um, yeah, medium size. So I'm gonna put that little one there. I like this one better. And I'm just scoring it. And I do it both ways. Um, okay, so now we've got the, the avocado. We've got the onion. One of the things that I remember is that when you were about two years old and I'd be flipping through the channels, if there was a cooking channel, 
you would cry if I clicked. You always loved cooking, you always loved the kitchen, baking, and all that stuff. So that was really cool. I knew I always wanted to be a chef. But mm -hmm. for, for a very short period of time, I thought I wanted to be a pastry chef. I, my mom never baked, like that's not her thing. So they never really had anything. They would have like, she would have random like baking powder, it was like old, or like baking soda that was like old. So I was always, I didn't understand that you could not substitute in baking. I just didn't know. Because we you could substitute in cooking. Because you can mm -hmm. substitute in cooking. One time I made some cookies and I did not have all of the appropriate ingredients, but I was like, okay, whatever. And to me, for the first time, I thought like, okay, compared to the stuff I had been kicking out, these were really good. It was quality cookies. So I left them out for my parents. My parents would come home, you know, late sometimes from work. And this time they came home and I could not wait for them to come home because I was like, oh, this is my best batch. They're gonna love, I could literally taste the cookies right now. Like I know how awful they were, but in my mind they were great. And I was like waiting by the door, I heard them and I had left it on like a little plate with like a little note for my parents. And I'm like sneaking downstairs to see their face. And they are hauling these cookies at each other like it's a snowball <laughs> fight. Like they were like little rocks, and they were laughing at all of my hard work. And then when they saw, I was like just standing there, like I how can you, we didn't I, know you were watching. And they're like they're delicious. I'm like oh, and I never baked again until school. Remember? No, I, I sent you to TSS so she could teach you how to bake. Yeah, but still, mommy, yeah. the, the what was done was done. Okay, you ruined. Well, it. they were like little rocks. Okay. What are you doing now? I am now to the chile. I like serranos because they're a little spicier than jalapenos. And I like spicy, but you could use a jalapeno. You can use really any kind of chile. Oh God, you're doing a horrible job. <laughs> Cause I'm a little punk. There we go. Okay. And then you can just tap yeah. it and see. Yeah. And it. remember, if you have these seeds, if you have pets or whatever, and, if, and they fall on the ground, they, if they get it in And your don't eyes, rub your eyes. And not only yeah. that, but People think it's only in the seeds that's the spice. The vein, yeah. the, the white part of it, that yeah, also contains yeah, a lot so of spice. Yeah, so this is what you want to get rid of. The vein. This whole thing here. But we, we're going to keep it right. Um, I mean, yeah, we can put it back in, but I'm just showing them. Mm -hmm. And then I like to just flatten. And you want to make these small, even if you like spicy, because it just, you don't want a big, huge, it's like garlic. Chop it off fine, and then you're going to. And if you here. can't find serrano, you can use jalapeno too. Yeah, jalapeno is probably the more, more common used here. In the serrano is a little spicier, right? A little spicier. It's not as spicy as habanero. That's where we come from, mm -hmm. the Yucatan. And we're also from Cuba, but in Cuba, they don't eat spicy. You are already great. Yeah, he is. yeah, I'm adding a little bit more. And then cilantro. Yeah, that's the last thing. I'm moving weird with my hand because I just got a tattoo that my mom isn't too happy about. I, I like the tattoo, I don't like the location on that hand. Mom, it's just really pretty and it reminds me, it says see the good. And I think because something that played a lot into like me having a little like anxiety, I got, I didn't never really had anxiety until after my youngest son and I had postpartum depression, it like triggered something in me. And I realized that in every situation I was looking for all the bad stuff. And in every person I would meet, any sign of anything bad, I would be like, okay, you're an awful person. And I think this is for me, it was just a reminder. I'm gonna look down at it and remember, even if I'm in a bad place or something, you know, not so great happens to see the good in the situation and in my life. Well, maybe that time. you should have put it on your forehead then. Well, I wouldn't be able to see it every time you look in the mirror. We are down to the cilantro, which is the last part. What I like to do is cilantro, wash it really well, dry it. And then you take the cilantro. I usually take off. Did you already do that, or these are just short yeah, stems? Short okay. Stem. Normally, there's a, a stem that sticks out. I'll just twist it and toss it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kind squish of it and squish it, it and roll it. I hate when people just leave the big leaves. Just not. and then you're gonna watch your fingers. Like that stock doesn't need to be there, so I'm gonna throw it out. And you're gonna cut. Ooh, this margarita is margarita ink. I know, I haven't eaten either, so it is definitely it's really good. And then you're gonna come back around. So, 
then we're gonna throw that in there. I might put another avocado in there because a lot of stuff. Here, grab one. This is for me and my mom. Why do you buy? She knows how to make nothing, like no small amounts of I anything. Don't, I can't. This is for, for me and her. CJ but will eat it. CJ will eat it. I can never get away with anything with my mom. But, but my, the best one that I really blew you away what? was the time that um, that you, I came home from work late and you were trying to get out of school. I think you, I don't know what, what was going on. You were just being lazy as per usual. <laughs> and you, I came home and Bonnie Love said, Katricia just threw up. And I said, oh, my dad ate it up. Oh yeah. And so I went my to the bathroom. My dad was so concerned. I looked in the bathroom. I looked in the toilet. First of all, who throws up and leaves it without flushing? for the parent to see. You wanna drop the seeds in Unless it? you're really trying to convince somebody. That was the first mistake she made. Can't play a player. And keep in mind too, my sisters would get sick all the time. I never got sick. So I went to the bathroom. The first weird thing was that A, nobody throws up and leaves it so that the other people can come look at it. That was the first clue, okay? Everybody else bought it, but I didn't. Second, I knew my child. So I looked in and I immediately thought, and I- No, you said it, it, why is it pink? I remember, well, yeah, cause, cause I'm laying it on thick. I'm like, oh, uh -huh. and I'm like- Look And I could tell she was totally pink. acting and I said, where you put, and I, I just instinctively knew because I was that kid. I said, you put baby power and chamomile lotion in there. And, didn't you? and, 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 and she, her eyes got like- I this. added a little bit of toothpaste for some chunkiness. <laughs> And her eyes got this big, and she got it. Cause she That's when they told me, my parents threatened to send me to boarding school more times than time. I can count. And then one time I called their bluff, and I packed my bags, and I remember I was like right back to the laundry room. And I was sitting there with my bags, and I was like, you said you're gonna send me away, they sent me away. And they just basically just like walked away, like, girl, yeah, okay. Really important after you make this, is it needs to chill for about an hour so that all of the flavors can kind of mesh together. Mm -hmm. So do you have like you have a little saran. plastic thingy? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, the funny thing is that with CJ, I can I always catch stuff. And my mom used to always have a feeling. Like I wouldn't even do the thing yet. Sometimes she would just catch me and I'm like, I didn't even do it yet. Or she would be like, you're up to something. I'm like, I'm not up to nothing. When I was in fact, I was up to something. And so with CJ, I would know, I still know, like, I'm like, CJ, what's going on? What What do you, and I can't explain how I know, and, but it makes sense because my mom used to get into shenanigans when she was younger. I used to get into shenanigans, so game recognized game. Yep. It wasn't a bad game, because everybody else we have fooled. I mean, we are very creative. We're very creative. CJ, CJ is very creative, but I know that it sucks for him that I catch him every single time. There's been times where I call his dad and I'm like, Craig, I know nothing has happened, but I feel like something is about to happen. He's up to something. I don't know what it is, but I know he's up to something. And his dad is like, you gotta give him the benefit of the doubt, Katrice. You always talking about something's gonna happen and you can feel it and you can't. Well, I'm right every time, brother. And you know, so it's a blessing and a curse. It really is. Okay, now we're gonna make some salsa. So my tia Ceci, I, she is my uncle's wife. I mean, she's my tia for yeah. basically almost my whole life. But she isn't my mom's sister. She was married into the family. She bakes all the time. And so we baked, but she also was known for her salsa. Mm -hmm. And everybody wanted her recipe. So she finally told me her recipe. <laughs> It's very, very simple. And it's in my cookbook. Let's open up sear, sear whip drizzle. Swizzle and Mommy, whip and your drizzle. daughter has a whole cookbook and you don't know what it is. I whip and margarita and haven't eaten anything. Sear whip drizzle, a collection of, collection of recipes. Mom, oh God, mom, we're both drunk. It is the best salsa you will ever make, ever in your life. It is the most delicious, divine salsa you'll ever have. So she finally told me, how she makes it, and I kind of put a spin on it. So she uses canned tomatoes, I use fire roasted tomatoes, and then I add one regular fresh tomato. Just, it kind of fools people. To authenticate it. Yeah, it fools people into thinking like, oh, I did all of this. This is a very easy recipe. It is not 
as um, intricate as my mom's. It is um, more of a dump and blend type of situation. So you're gonna use one can of fire roasted diced tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Put that in there. Then you're going to cut up one Roma tomato. I actually like tomatoes on the vine. My mom likes Roma tomatoes. I like tomatoes well, on the I, vine. Well, it depends on what I'm doing. When I'm doing a pico de gallo, I don't use Roma. Okay. Then you're going to put a big bunch of cilantro. Then we're going to add a jalapeno. You can tell by the smell of a jalapeno if it's very hot. Mm -hmm. Because if you smell it and you're like, ooh, like it tingles a little mm -hmm. bit. I don't think this one is hot. No, this is kind of mild. Like a mild one. Yeah. So because it's mild, I'm going to toss the whole thing in there. Yeah. I feel like it's Yeah, hard. yeah. I'm going to yeah, put half of, of this. So technically, you're going to add about two, two cans of fire roasted tomatoes. So, uh, so I'm going to do two big cloves of garlic. Oh, where's the onion? Yeah. Oh, you put the half. You went for the whole half. Okay. Yeah, let's just do it. Let's make it happen. So yeah, a half of a lemon is fine. And then salt. Okay. So salt. And the thing too is with tomatoes are acidic on their own. If you're making a recipe and you need something acidic, you don't always have, if you don't want it too acidic, you don't always have to go with a lemon or a lime. Tomatoes have a lot of acid on their own, so that is a good one. So now we're putting the lemon and the tomato. Whenever you have a lot of acidity, you're gonna to have to add a little bit more salt than usual to balance it, or you will not taste the salt. It will not come through at all. And then you're gonna add some black pepper. So we're gonna put this in here. And you wanna make sure that you blend it very well because you have those cloves of garlic. You don't wanna like chunk it. So here's what we've got. It smells, you guys. Oh, holy shit. And we're back after the small snafu. We had a margarita mishap. A margarita mishap. We the guac has on. chilled for about an hour now, which is what you want before serving it to guests. Mm -hmm. And let all those flavors marinate. And, and then you normally, you can chill this. It is best the next day, but it's fine the day of too. Yeah, but make sure you chill it at least an hour. Yeah. Another thing that I want to say is chips because chips have changed so much throughout the years they are, they're kind of gone the same way as the grocery bags they've gotten thinner and thinner and thinner and you know how you get a grocery bag now with plastic bags and you need to double them up or everything's going to fall through that's what's happening with the chips so you have to get a chip that can sustain guac and salsa and these are these are, Calidad is made by Mexicans. I think that they're from Texas, but anyways. Okay, so let's try the mm -hmm. glass. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Really good. Got a little kick. Even no. though we got rid of a lot of the seeds. No, you like a chunk of your mm -hmm. guac. What if somebody wanted a smoother guac? Could they put you it, or throw it all in the blender? Yeah. Or you can use a molcajete. It's a stone I'm, grinder. I mean, mom, some people don't want to sit there and grind it by hand. You can do it that way, but I wouldn't add any water or anything else, so it's hard to get out. This salsa. Mmm. Tastes cilantro. Mmm. -hmm. Mm. But the fire roasted, like when you use a can of fire roasted, it gives it like some depth, right? I'm gonna have a little sippy sip of Patricia's. Mom. Mm.